I'm Anselm, I'm the founder of Garden Computing. We built Jazz. Today I'll talk to you about how local first is accidentally perfect for the AI age. Um, and my point is going to be that the same things that made local first promising for apps are actually also what make it promising for AI. Um, the reason I got into local first was I built lots of apps. Every time I get really excited, I'm like, yay, let's build an app. Um, but then you confront it with all of these like technology choices and it's just really overwhelming. And wait, these, the, the people of you who were here last year probably remember the slide. I'm literally reusing the same slides because like the promise is still exactly the same. Local first and what I'm trying to build with Jazz to me means that I can get rid of all of that and, and just have to worry about three things, which is defining my data model, implementing permissions, and building my UI, which sounds awfully close to like just building my app, basically. And really nothing has changed since last year, except uh, the color of our logo is a bit different blue. Oh, and there's like 14 of us now. Um, and together we've managed to make quite a lot of progress in this short little time towards really making jazz like a batteries included framework that works across a bunch of platforms, have, has everything you might need. But you can see there's something missing here because while these are all nice features to have and things that are needed, something else happened in the meantime. Um, it's, it's kind of, it was time for us to, to address the elephant in the room. And I don't mean this one, this is James's job. Um, I mean AI, of course. Um, and in particular, vibe coding. I think that was the first really interesting thing where it hit me that this will completely transform how we code because now suddenly everyone can build apps but then you're like wait a second doesn't that mean that like we now have a different reason why you don't need to do all of that because you can just like vibe boilerplate it away like we could just build on traditional stacks and that's now suddenly really easy why do we still need local first um, and other than it being a horrible brute force hack I think we can actually be smarter about this and there's a big problem which is even with these models, their context windows are actually quite small. And what you see in practice is that the things that fit into the context window, like building the UI, for example, they're actually really good at. Something like V0, it is really good at making UI. But building a full stack app where you need to consider all of these things and kind of integrate them with each other, not so much. Um, and then I'm like, okay, this problem is kind of familiar to me because this is kind of like, I have limited context size and I want to only think about building my app and this, wait, yeah, wait a second, this is why I started this whole thing in the first place. And I realized that I built Jazz and, and we designed the developer experience in a way that you only have to worry about these three things and these actually fit into your context window, which means that they maybe fit into the context window of the AI. So the, the obvious question for us was, what happens if you give something like Jazz to an LLM? Which leads me to part one of my talk, which is building local first apps with AI. So what happens? Um, it's amazing, they do amazingly well. They one-shot whole apps. Everyone lived heavily, happily ever after, it's great. Um, and that's the case now, eventually, kind of, but it's of course not the full story, because you have this big problem the knowledge cutoff, which is great news if you're super based, but if you're any new kind of local first framework, it's a bit problematic. Um, and then I was like, wait, this is actually also kind of like a familiar problem, but uh, we, like, I didn't really know what to do about it. We can't just wait until Jazz is like included in the training data. Um, but again, it reminded me of something and it's that like, your average developer actually also has a knowledge cutoff of 2023. <laughs> <laughs> And the, the biggest challenge that we've had with like getting people to use Jazz um, and, and trying out something new is kind of the same that the LLMs are facing. So then we were like, okay, how do we solve this problem for humans? Well, we write docs, right? And then there's this new thing called LLMs to text, which is kind of like docs for AIs. But then we ran into the next problem, which is of course that um, people don't really read docs. And similarly, LLMs don't really read the LLMs to text. And then we were like, okay, we need to do something more advanced. We need, like, we need cursor rules, we need custom specialized MCP servers, we need to automatically evolve how well we're doing, and uh, do we need to fine tune models ourselves now? And as you can tell, we kind of got a bit desperate. Um, but then we were like, wait, wait, like, we've been doing the right thing all along because the problem to people not reading docs is that even if you're building something really new and alien, 
that works differently, like a local first framework, try to make it look like something familiar. That's what we've been doing the whole time with Jest, like something they already know. And many other local first solutions have the story of, look, it's just like a database that now lives in your client and it's synced to the client. And that makes sense to, to some people. And our story that's worked really well is like, it's like front end state that's now magically cloud persisted and synced everywhere. Um, so instead of use state, you just use co-state, that's like the short version of it, and you get this like local data with collaboration, sync, and permissions built in. Um, and people really love it. Some people say things like Jazz has amazing DX, and that's nice, but the problem with statements like that is that, um, and, and yeah, sorry, I forgot, the LLMs actually also really appreciate this. They, they can now just build around what looks like local front state. The problem with statements, um, like this is that you only hear from the people who still want to talk to you. <laughs> um, because you're lucky with human adopters if you get to see them fail once and learn from it and make your API better. But the cool thing with LLMs is you actually get to see them fail a thousand times a day and we realize that's actually really valuable for evolving our API and making it better for both humans and LLMs. So now our like most enlightened take on Vibe coding is <laughs> Just make the API whatever the LLM guesses. And a good example of that is uh, how schema definitions work in Jazz, where it was like, yeah, we have this custom schema syntax where you extend classes, and it's kind of both the schema and the instance, and you have to use our weird custom helpers. And the, the LLMs were just like, oh yeah, let's build a Jazz app, I'll just use Zot for the schema. And we're like, yeah, but you can't do that. And then we were like, you know what, maybe, maybe the schema should just be Zot. <laughs> So um, I'm happy to announce <laughs> <laughs> Jazz schemas are now based on Zot4, which just came out. And it's, it, it, if you've ever done anything with Zot, it looks really simple. You just you, you use the Zot things for like your primitive fields, anything that's collaborative. You use our like co-definer methods. Um, but it, it should feel really familiar. And the LLMs are doing better. And like, um, our weirdness budget is like suddenly doing much better. As a result, it's more fun than ever to use Jazz. I'd, I'd really encourage all of you who haven't yet to give it a try. And especially with Vibe coding, it, it's like a match made in heaven. The problem with Vibe coding is it kind of enables everyone to build apps now, right? And uh, I don't really like that. I want to still gatekeep software development. <laughs> so the, the natural thing to do is that we like we will um, we're running a certification program for Vibe coders now. Those of you who took part in our workshop yesterday already know about it. If you build something with Jazz and show it to us, we will certify you as a Vibe coder. Please come visit us at the booth. That's part one. Uh, I still have a lot more to show. I'll try to do it quickly. This is this was about building local first apps with AI. But something else that a lot of people want to do is build local first apps with AI in it. So how do we do that? And this is where I, I, I want to announce something else, which is like coming from a belief that people who are really serious about DevTools and Infra should build their own apps, because that's the only way to make sure it does everything that you want to do. And by don't, I don't mean example apps. We have plenty of example apps, plenty of example apps. We even have plenty of complex example apps. No, you need to be building a real app and you need to try to make it a best-in-class app. Because if you can't build that on top of your framework, it's not really a generic framework. It, it should, you should be able to build competitive products with your framework and your infrastructure. You might have heard of Slack. You might have heard of Discord. Today we're announcing Waffle. <laughs> A couple features, how is it different? First, it's just a web app, it's public, it's easy to join, which means no more this. <laughs> it's fully local first, and it's actually so far purely a front-end app, but you'll see in a second it has most of the functionality that you'd expect, and it will be open source, so you can modify it, build your own things on top of it. It will probably be commercial open source, because again, we want to see if it's viable as a product, and you can steal things for your own Jazz apps. Um, I'll probably be ready this autumn, I hope. Do you want to see a super early, hacky version of it? Yeah. What you can do is you can go to waffle.place, and um, you can see that we've set up, I'll do that in my incognito window here. You can join our local first conf waffle. 
And if we go in there and the Wi-Fi works, it might work better for you guys. Then you see a list of channels, and we have like our general chat here. Um, and then I'll, you, you can do this little join with GitHub thing. It should automatically pull like your avatar and everything. I'm already logged in here. So I'll go over here in the general channel, and you can be like, hey, how's it going? Um, you can react to each other's messages. You can, of course, upload images. So I can be like, yo, check out my new drip. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, kind of everything you'd expect from a Discord app, right? You can, you can, if you look here, you have your little like conference badge type thing. It should pull your socials from GitHub. You can add each other as friends and then DM each other. Um, kind of everything you expect, and we built this over basically like two-ish weeks, most of it yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> and our goal was like, it's not really an MVP for Discord, but it can be a minimally useful conference companion app, right? Um, because we really think that Local First Conf should have a Local First companion app, right? I already showed it to you. This is the URL if you want to check it out later. I showed you the demo. But the, the main thing were like, was like, what has happened since Discord and Slack came out? And, and the, the, the question was like, what does, it, what does an AI first Slack and Discord look like? So now we've got our app, we're building a real app. Now we're all excited, let's add AI to our app, right? But then this will look familiar. AI is actually really tricky to build into apps. And we were like, we, we, we have to figure out a solution to this. What if you didn't have to do most of these things? And our slogan for what I'm about to announce is, don't add AI to your app, add soul. <laughs> the first thing we wanted to try was audio transcription because we thought for the conference it would be cool if we had like live transcriptions. So that's actually running. It, this is kind of what the API looks like. You just do use recorder and then um, it, it listens to your microphone, asks for permissions. When you get a new chunk, we just create a message in here and put it, push it to our thread. If, if it updates, we edit the message. Um, you can actually see we've got these channels for each talk here. This is mine, where I'm currently talking. And if it's still running well, we'll give it a second to load. Then, um, yeah, you should see it update as I speak. We've had this running for the previous talks as well. We'll do our best to keep it running for the next talks. And this is actually just running over there on a, like, a really crappy little MacBook Air in web GPU locally in the browser. And we literally just shout out to the audio guy, hooked up the, the microphone, and pressed this little like microphone button. And that's how that works. So that was pretty exciting. Thank you. And you can see here, we didn't have to think about we, where do we need to send requests, how do we like put this back into state. It's very naturally and easy to do all in the front end, and that convinces us that local state, local first state, is actually a godsend for AI. Um, yeah, I told you this. Um, and then we wanted to do something like, what if we actually use LLMs? And we looked into like how good are local LLMs, and like Dax has said so nicely, they're actually pretty crap. Um, the audio transcription is amazing. Um, LLMs that fit on a laptop are really dumb and really slow. Um, so we were like, okay, probably for the time being, we need to offer a bit of a hybrid. So I'll show you, like, we have this weather button here. The way that works is we have this, like, chat-like generate where you can translate jazz state into something that looks like a chat so the LLM can react to it, and then you interpret the responses and put that back into state. And actually, it looks something like this. I'm going to this, like, playground channel here, and you can see the very bottom, wow, there's lots of you here already. We have this like weather agent, so I can be like, hey, what's the weather in Berlin? But it's like, it's American weather, so it's like Berlin, New Hampshire, that's all it can help with. <laughs> <laughs> and then let's see if that, um, oh yeah, I'll have to do that on localhost because of course. Yeah, there we go, weather agent is responding to me. Um, <laughs> So we have like LLMs in there that actually uses like an MCP tool that's running. But then we were like, 
that's actually still pretty crap developer experience. I think we can do better. What if we got rid of this as well? Um, and what this really became is this idea that on top of local first state, we can actually build AI that already knows how to use your app. Also coming this autumn, hopefully, if you're curious to try it. And the API is much, much simpler. You just import collaborate. And you say, like, look, I've got this like thread schema here. Here's the idea of it. I'd like to load each of the messages. You just give it a prompt. You give it the URL to my local like weather MCP. And that's it. And it knows how to interact with Jazz State. It can kind of infer what your app is about. You didn't have to tell it um, what it can do, that it can create messages and so on. It just figures it all out. Um, and that's actually a lie. We didn't do that because I'm a huge fan of malleable software. And I think one of the big promises of AI is that you can expose these capabilities to the user. So if we look at Waffle again, you can see that if I go to configuration, this is actually something I can just do in the UI here. So why don't I create a new channel? Um, and we, we create like a new agent just from the UI here. So for example, what's something you'd in a, you need in a Discord? It's like moderation. Um, and we just say, because like the, the weather bot still creates messages. You saw it can use the reply feature. It figured all of that out. But we can also make do completely different stuff, like delete offensive messages. And then for it to have the permissions to delete other messages, we just make that agent an admin. If I go to that channel now and I'm like, hey, what's up? Um, it doesn't like it's happy with that, right? But then if I'm like, uh, <laughs> if you give it a second, no? Let's see. What did it decide to do? Oh, it just broke. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there you go, it deleted it. <laughs> and again. I didn't have to tell it anything about my app, just this prompt, and yeah, super excited about that. I think Local First is actually a uniquely interesting sub substrate for that. Um, let's build some cool stuff together. Um, Come see us if you're building something during the conference. Our Discord is really friendly. We love helping people build their apps. And if you're interested in meta building cool stuff, we're hiring, by the way. Thank you very much. <laughs>